When it comes to the best TV shows of all time, there are always a few that come to mind. Breaking Bad, The Wire, The Office, Game of Thrones, and of course, The Sopranos. The ending of The Sopranos is one of television's most controversial finales. Not for a lack of quality, but for its openness to interpretation. But why did such a successful show like The Sopranos end after just six seasons? All shows must come to an end, but it's usually driven by external circumstances like creative exhaustion or viewer disinterest. And with The Sopranos, this simply wasn't the case. So stay with us as we take a deep dive into the mind of the show's creators to uncover exactly why The Sopranos ended. Warning, spoilers for The Sopranos, obviously. One of the best shows of all time. The Sopranos is an American crime drama created by David Chase. The show revolves around Tony Soprano, played to perfection by James Gandolfini. Tony is a New Jersey-based Italian-American mobster, and the show portrays the difficulties he faces as he tries to balance his family life with his role as leader of a criminal organization. The Sopranos was initially conceived by Chase as a movie about a mobster working through conflict with his mother in therapy. At the time, gangster films were dipping in popularity, which motivated Chase to reimagine the idea as a drama. Chase quickly realized the potential that TV could offer, allowing much greater character development over many hours worth of episodes. This resulted in the mobster having a home life, a wife, and two kids, each with their own rich inner lives that offered plenty of potential conflict. Adding his other family, a tough group of New Jersey wise guys, and there was more than enough material to stretch past a two-hour runtime. The Sopranos premiered on HBO on January 10, 1999. It quickly became recognized as a prime example of must-see TV. The show ran for six seasons, totaling 86 episodes, until 2007. It was primarily filmed at Silver Cup Studios in Long Island City in Queens and on location in New Jersey. The executive producers throughout the show's run were David Chase, Brad Gray, Robin Green, Mitchell Burgess, Eileen Landris, Terrence Winter, and Matthew Weiner. The Sopranos won a multitude of awards, including Peabody Awards, 21 Primetime Emmys, and five Golden Globes. In 2013, the Writers Guild of America named it the best-written TV series of all time, while TV Guide ranked it the best TV series of all time. In 2016, it ranked first in the Rolling Stone list of the 100 greatest TV shows of all time. Hey, if you're enjoying this video so far, make sure you give it a like and subscribe to Trender if you haven't already. Why The Sopranos Ended the Sopranos ended after an extended sixth season, while still at the height of its popularity. The final season was split into two parts, the first released in March 2006 and the second in January 2007. The decision to end The Sopranos ultimately lied with Chase. The show ended because Chase drafted what he believed to be the best possible finale for that story. He told a crowd gathered for his Patty Chayefsky Laurel Award for Television acceptance in 2008 that he came up with the ending for the show during a hiatus between seasons 5 and 6. Although HBO went along with Chase ending the show after the sixth season, they had made some interference early in the show's production. Chase apparently didn't want to continue with the show past its second season. This is where HBO stepped in and gave pay raises to Chase and his cast. This made leaving the show essentially impossible. Once the fourth season of the show was winding down, Chase expressed he had more to give The Sopranos and wasn't ready to give up. He was feeling really good and wanted to keep going with the show. The fifth season won the Best Drama Series Emmy Award, and then HBO chairman Chris Albrecht told The New York Times that Chase felt really reinvigorated. This led to the initial plan to produce 10 more episodes, which transitioned into a deal to produce 21 episodes. All 21 were filmed in one continuous production cycle. This allowed Chase to satisfy HBO leadership with the potential money that the sixth and final season could make. They, of course, wanted the show to continue as long as possible, but this deal was the next best thing and still allowed for the story to be organic and true to itself. The result was a finale that came around naturally with the storytelling. It was the right way to finish the tale of Tony Soprano. How did the show end? The final season of The Sopranos was an interesting and unusual event. With it being split in two, this worked for the format of the story. The first half of the season featured Tony in a coma, moving within his own subconscious. Once he woke up, he began to have a bit of a turnaround due to his near-death experience. This wouldn't last, however. In the second part, the New York crew is put at odds with Tony's New Jersey crew, but in good old soprano fashion, Tony comes out ahead. That's what we're meant to believe anyway. 
The final episode, titled Made in America, concludes when Tony goes to a diner and waits for his family to arrive. As he's waiting, he puts on Journey's Don't Stop Believing. The way the scene continues gives the audience an insight into what the life of a made man entails. Every time a person enters the diner, Tony looks up, always looking over his shoulder. The creators take their time with the scene, allowing the tension to build and the audience to suspect every customer as a danger to the character we've come to know and love. Eventually, Tony's wife, Carmela, arrives. She enters, followed by a suspicious-looking guy. His son, AJ, then enters, wanting onion rings. The suspicious guy looks towards Tony from the counter. At the same time, Tony's daughter, Meadow, is struggling to parallel park. The tension continues to build and refuses to relent. The suspicious-looking guy now gets up and walks past Tony to go to the bathroom. For any film buff out there, this is a pretty cool nod to The Godfather. This just adds more tension to an already intense scene. Whatever the suspicious guy is doing, it's probably not good for Tony. Even more people enter and begin to admire a tasty-looking cake. Meanwhile, Meadow still struggles to park. Finally, the onion rings arrive and Meadow rushes across the street, building on the possibility of her getting hit by a car. The bell at the door rings. Tony looks up, and the screen abruptly cuts to black along with the song cutting to silence. What did the ending mean? Chase's decision to cut to black and keep Tony's fate somewhat of a mystery was also hailed strongly by his fellow writers Terrence Winter and Matthew Weiner. Winter talked to Deadline about the scene leaving Tony's fate ambiguous while serving as a microcosm of Tony's entire predicament as a gangster. His interpretation of the show's ending was that for Tony, even going out for ice cream with his family is fraught with paranoia. Winter spoke about the famous words that gangsters live by. They always say there's only two ways to get out of this. One is jail, the other is dead. So whether it happened that night or it didn't, it really didn't matter. At some point, something bad is going to happen to Tony Soprano. So depending on how you see it, Tony died that night or he didn't. But at the end of the day, his story is only leading one way. It's up to the viewer to decide. Now it's time to hear from you. What are your thoughts? Was Tony Soprano killed that night or did his fate end later down the road? And did you find the show's finale satisfying? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to Trender for more. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.